Welcome to chapter 8 of the React Relay tutorial on how to GraphQL. In this chapter, you're going to add real-time functionality to the app using GraphQL subscriptions. Before we dive into the implementation, let's quickly get an understanding of what GraphQL subscriptions actually are. So GraphQL subscriptions are a GraphQL feature that allow you to implement event-based real-time functionality in your application. And it works in the way that a client can subscribe to interesting events. These events, most of the times, are going to be mutations. So in our case, in the following, we're actually going to be interested in events where a new vote is being created by other users so that we can update the app in real time so that the user doesn't have to refresh the page. And finally, it's important to note that subscriptions are different than GraphQL queries and mutations in that a GraphQL query and mutation usually follow a typical request response cycle, whereas a subscription represents a stream of data. So subscriptions are usually implemented with WebSockets where the server maintains a steady connection to the client and whenever a, the event happens on the server side, it pushes the data that the client subscribed for to the subscribed client. This is the documentation for how you can use subscriptions with Relay Modern, and it actually works ki kind of similar to what you did with mutations before. If you remember what you did for mutations, essentially we had this commit mutation function that we could call and we can pass we could pass in the environment as well as a configuration object. And with the subscription, it's kind of similar in that we've got this request subscription function right here, where we also pass in an environment, as well as a configuration object, where we specify what is the event that we are interested in and what's the data that we want to receive when this event happens. We also can pass some variables and a couple of callbacks to specify what should happen when the event occurs. And then finally, we also have this updater function that allows us to update the, the relay store with the data that we receive from the, relay, from the GraphQL subscription when it fires. One really important note about using subscriptions with Relay and GraphQL is that the GraphQL Relay API at the moment does not support subscriptions out of the box. So you'll have to make a couple of manual adjustments to the schema that you're feeding into the Relay compiler to make the subscriptions work. So here in the playground, you can actually see that as you're switching between the simple and the relay API, you can see that when you're selecting the simple API, you also have the capabilities of creating a subscription, whereas with the relay API, this is not the case. So what you'll have to do is you have to copy over the subscription type into your project from the simple API to the relay API, and then this is going to work and satisfy the relay compiler. For this tutorial, however, you don't have to do that manually yourself, as you already have all the required types inside your GraphQL schema. And that's because we included them inside the schema that you copied over in the first chapter. And just for reference, here is what the required types look like. So we've got the subscription type, which is one of the three root types that can be found in a GraphQL schema next to the query type and the mutation type. And the subscription type right here only has one field that is called vote and of type vote subscription payload. And you can use this field to subscribe to all to, to the three different kinds of mutations that can happen on the vote type. And the way how this works is that you can ask for what kind of mutation actually happens. So this could have been a created, an updated or a deleted mutation. This node field here on the vote subscription payload type provides information about the new vote that was created or the existing node that was updated. Then you can also get information about which fields were updated in the case of an updated mutation. And in the case of an updated or deleted mutation, you can also ask for the previous values. So the values that this particular node had before the mutation occurred. All right, this is enough background information for now, so let's go ahead and start with the actual implementation. And the first thing that you'll have to do when starting the implement or when implementing subscriptions inside your app, you have to add a new dependency to your project. 
and that's the Subscriptions Transport WebSockets package. So this package contains functionality that is going to maintain and manage the WebSocket connection for you that's used for the subscription itself. Once the package was installed, you can go ahead and configure the Relay environment to also tell it about the WebSockets connection that it should use for subscriptions. And the way how you do this is by completely replacing the current instantiation of the network right here. So at the moment, the way how you create your network is by passing one function that represents the, um, the, the, the actual GraphQL endpoint that you're using in your application. What you're doing now is you're passing in a second function and the second function will be responsible for the subscriptions. So just go ahead and replace everything and the way how this works now is that the first function that was just passed as an, anom as an anom anonymous function before, you now store in this fetch query variable and pass it as the first argument just like before. And then you also have this setup subscription function right here where you're actually using the subscription client which is provided by the subscri subscription transport WebSocket package that you just installed and you need to configure it with the WebSockets endpoint that is also given to you by GraphQL. To complete this setup, you have to do two more things. So the first, of course, is to import the subscription client on top of the file. So let's go ahead and do that next. And as you replace the previous um, function that you passed into the create in the um, in the create network call, you now have to go ahead and replace the project ID placeholder with the actual project ID of your GraphQL project. And the way how you can obtain this project ID is by simply taking a look at the project.graphQL file and checking the metadata up here, which contains the project ID and simply paste it into your project. Perfect, your app is now ready to use subscriptions and you can now use the request subscription function that we saw in the very beginning in the subscription documentation of Relay. And the way how you're going to do this is by first creating a new directory inside your project and that you'll call subs subscriptions. And here we follow a similar idea as we did with the mutations, where we also had a dedicated directory where we put all the different mutations that can be used inside of our project. We're doing exactly the same with the subscriptions right here. So let's go ahead and create a dedicated subscription for new votes. Once the file was created, you can go ahead and put the following code inside of it. So at first you're importing the GraphQL function that you used for all the fragments, queries and mutations before, as well as the request subscription function that we quickly discussed on the um, Relay documentation website. And then also the environment that you just configured to also be able to use subscriptions. What you're doing then is again similar to what you did with the mutations, where the very first thing what you're doing in this file is you're specifying what the subscription should look like. So what you're doing is you're subscribing to events on the vote type and in particular, you're only interested in events that are created events. So you're not interested in updated or deleted events. So this subscription is only going to fire whenever a new vote is created, but not when an existing vote is updated or deleted. And that's what you achieve with this filter right here. Second, you also have to add the payload of the subscription. And the payload, very similar to a query and a mutation, defines the data that the server is going to send over to the client whenever the event happens. So as we discussed in the beginning, the node field contains information about the new vote that was created. So here what you're doing is you're asking for the ID of the new vote that was created for the ID of the user that created the vote, as well as the ID of the link that was being voted on. And then you also ask the, for how many votes are now in total on this particular link. So you have this information and can display it inside the application. 
Then, again, similar what you did with the mutations before, you're actually exporting a function that other um, components inside your application can use and call. And this doesn't take any arguments this time, which is different than with the mutations. But inside of the function, it, it again looks very, very similar to the mutations. So first you're creating this subscription config object where you're using the new vote subscription that you defined above. You're also passing in um, the updater function that you define right here. And from the previous chapter, you already have the basic understanding of what the updater function does and how it works. And essentially here, we have a very similar implementation as the updater function that we already saw in the create vote mutation right here. So essentially, we're retrieving the information about the total number of votes of the link that we receive from the server. And then we're setting this as the new value in inside the cache. So that's exactly what's happening here is, and the idea is very very similar to what you did in the create vote mutation before and finally what you're doing is you're calling the request subscription function and pass in the environment as well as the subscription config object that contains all the information about the specifics of the subscription that you're sending to the server nice so with this subscription in place you can actually go ahead and use it the only question is where should you actually call the subscription? So in our case, it's actually not too important as this is different as the mutations where we don't have any context dependent arguments that we have to pass into this subscription function right here. So potentially we could put it into our app.js file, which is the root of our component hierarchy or into the linked list page or into the linked list. It wouldn't be a good idea though to put it into link as we render multiple links and this would mean that we also would create multiple subscriptions and the client would maintain as many connections to the server as we have links on the screen. And this is definitely not what we want. So where we're going to put it is actually the link list component. But as I said, you could also put it in the app or uh, link list page components. And here we'll simply use the component did mount function, which is one of the lifecycle functions of a React component that'll be called initially and only once when the uh, component was created. So for this code to work, of course, you also have to import the new vote subscription function from the file where you just created it. So this is the import statement that you have to add. And then the next thing that you can do is call the relay compiler to compile the subscription that you just added. And this is precisely what we're going to do right now. So switching over to a terminal and calling the relay compiler. But in the way that we implemented the app right now, it's actually going to throw an error and it complains that we're passing an unknown argument called filter to the new vote subscription. So let's take a look at this and understand why this error occurs. So here where we are defining the vote, and this is the code that was just compiled or tried to be compiled by the relay compiler. Here on the vote field, we're using this filter with the mutation in field that we provide. But if again, we take a look at the schema, we can actually see that this argument is not part of the schema at the moment. So we'll have to fix this by adding this argument to the vote field right here. And here is what this argument looks like. So we just add this filter argument that is of type vote subscription filter. And this type at the moment is not part of our schema either. So we have to go and import it or put it into the schema as well. And here we simply define the one field that we want this type to have, which is the mutation in field, which is of type array of model mutation type. And this can be either created, updated or deleted. So in the array that we are using to specify what kinds of uh, events we're interested in, we could potentially also add the updated or deleted fields uh, or values. Uh, to express that we also want to receive information upon these events. All right, so now we adjusted the types in our schema and the relay compiler should be happy when we're compiling the app right now. So let's go ahead and invoke the relay compiler again. So now we see that it actually worked. 
we can go back inside our project and see that uh, again, the Relay compiler created this generated directory, which contains the compiled version of our subscription. So let's go ahead and test the subscription right now by calling yarn start and opening our application. So let's open the application at localhost 3000. And here is the app with the information that we put into the uh, database before. And now we want to make sure that we actually can test this in real time. And there is a trick that I want to show you for testing subscriptions first. That is, you can also go and test subscriptions inside of a playground. So if you put two windows right next to each other, you'll actually be able to observe the changes that are, or the, the data that is being transmitted by the server when a subscription fires. So the way how this works is that we are going to copy over the subscription code that we defined in our app, and we put it into the playground when the simple API is selected. We can then go and hit the play button right here, and this time we're actually not going to see the result of our operation right away, but instead we'll only see this loading indicator, which means that the WebSocket connection to the server has now been established, and we're waiting for the data when a new mutation on the vote type is happening on the back end. So we can trigger this mutation from inside our app. So if I just click this vote button right here, we'll actually see that the corresponding data will be pushed to the client, to the playground on the left. So here is exactly the data that we expected. So this is the information about the new link that was created. And we also see that this was already up Dated, and we already see that one vote is now available on this particular link. However, this could also be because we implemented the updater function for the create vote mutation in the last chapter. So to be really sure that this actually works inside our app, we have to open two windows and make sure that we can test it once more. So this time I'm going to submit a vote in this window and we'll see, hopefully see, that the number of votes also updates in the other window. And this is actually true, so here you can see that the subscription actually works inside the application by putting two windows next to each other and triggering the mutation in only one of them and see how the second window updates. All right, this was it for the eighth chapter of the React Relay tutorial on how to GraphQL. The next chapter is the last chapter, and there you're going to learn how you can implement pagination with Relay Modern.